What if we could undo diseases like a biological rewind button? Imagine a tool that edits DNA like a real life autocorrect. That tool exists. It's called CRISPR. No, not crispy like your chips. CRISPR stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats, basically sequences of viral DNA stored in bacterial genomes, like genetic selfies of past infections. To better understand how CRISPR works, we'll classify it into four key parts. First is gRNA. The G is for guide. When a virus attacks again, the bacteria use these CRISPR sequences to produce a guide RNA, or gRNA. It's basically a GPS for Cas9. GRNA is a specifically designed strand of RNA that's programmed to find a specific sequence in the DNA, usually something harmful like part of a virus or a faulty gene. The gRNA is made to match the target exactly so it can lead Cas9 straight to the problem. Problem spot. Next, Cas9, the scissors. Cas9 is an endonuclease. It cuts the middle of the DNA. In this instance, Cas9 cuts the faulty part of the DNA, assisting in DNA cleavage, but it can only cut next to a special DNA code called a PAM site. It gives the green light, signaling that the DNA can be cut. Once the DNA is cut, the cell tries to fix it. This is DNA repair, where gene editing happens. There are two repair paths. One, non-homologous end joining, which is quick but messy. Insertions and deletions can occur, causing errors. The second, more precise option is homology-directed repair. Scientists can supply a template with the exact gene they want inserted. With CRISPR, scientists can edit nearly any gene in bacteria, plants, animals, and even humans. So this all sounds great, but when can we start? It's already been used to treat sickle cell disease and some cancers, but with great power comes great responsibility. Who decides what counts as a bad gene? What if editing goes wrong? CRISPR lets us rewrite life itself. Now science and society must decide what story to tell.